Hi, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can import an IIF file into QuickBooks Online. So you're probably watching this because you've been importing IIF files into QuickBooks Desktop, and now you switch to QuickBooks Online, you're looking for that same feature, but can't find it. Well, unfortunately, IIF imports are not supported directly in QuickBooks Online. So just a bit of background about the IIF format. It's a text format and it supports multiple different transactions, whether they're sales, purchases, timesheets, or even journal entries. And it also supports lists. Now, you'll also find that some IIF files contain both lists and transactions, multiple transaction types in the same file. So they can be quite complex in their structure. What I'm going to show you in this demonstration is two ways that you can import that information into QuickBooks Online. So the first way involves actually opening the IIF file in Excel and doing a little bit of editing to make sure it's in a format that we can upload using the file import feature that's available in QuickBooks Online. Now, there are obviously some restrictions around that, restricted certain transaction types, and we'll also look at why we would need to do this edit every time that you upload. So there are some limitations, but it's a possibility. So I'm gonna show you how we do that in the first way. And then in the second way, I'm gonna show you how we can use a utility that will open the IIF file, translate it and convert it, and then import it directly into your QuickBooks online file. So let's have a look on the desktop of how we do those two different ways. So I've opened my copy of QuickBooks online and now I'm going to show you the IIF file and the contents of that that we're going to import into QuickBooks online using the invoice import feature. So this is a sample IIF file that I'm going to use, and it includes invoice data. So before we start, I'm going to open that and show you the contents of that in Excel. So it's possible to open an IR file in Excel by going to File, um, selecting All Files, and then selecting the IIF file. And Excel is quite good in chopping up the columns and presenting it in a format that's quite readable. So you can see here um, the structure of these files is it has a, a header row, and then this particular section is importing the accounts that are associated with the invoice. These are importing the inventory items, the classes, the customer detail for that invoice and so on. And at the bottom of the IIF file, there is this section here, which includes the transaction detail for the invoice. And that's the information that we really need when we're gonna import into QuickBooks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this particular data here and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it in another sheet. So this is the core information that we need. Now I'm going to structure it so that it's all on the same row. So I'm going to take these what we call split line details and move it to here. And then I'm going to take the corresponding split lines here and put them underneath this row, underneath their column headers, just like this. Finally, tidy it up to remove some of the unwanted rows, in particular down here. So now we've got um, a column which contains the customer. We've got a column that contains the invoice number. Um, we've got columns that contains the various um, line items that we're gonna be importing and the price of those and the quantities. So that's really the key information that we're gonna need when we import into um, QuickBooks Online. And I'll show you the next step. So what you also have to do is maybe tidy some of this up um, I'm going to put in some extra details in here so that that 
so that QuickBooks Online knows that there's three rows there. So now we've completed the editing and putting the, the data in the format that we need to import into QuickBooks Online, we can save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to save it in the CSV. That's a comma separated value format. I'm going to switch back into QuickBooks Online. And now I'm going to upload that information. So clicking on the cog icon, I'm going to select the underneath the tools menu, the import data. And I'll choose the transaction type as invoices. And here I'm going to browse to and select the CSV file that I created. I'm also going to select the option to add new contacts or customers and add new products and services if I need to. So the next stage is to actually go through and map the mandatory fields that we need to import. So we're going to select document number. We're going to select the customer name, the invoice date, the due date, we'll select the format of that date as well, which is going to be month, day, year, and so on. We're going to select the column that contains the item, which is this in inventory item column, the quantity. So now we've mapped all our columns um, from the CSV import field to the QuickBooks field, we we'll click next and we select the tax codes that we want to convert from our tax codes in the in the IIF file. So that's going to be Novat and we'll put this in as 20%. So once you've completed that and QuickBooks has validated, we can then start the import process. And there we've done, we've imported that invoice from the IIF file into QuickBooks Online, albeit we've had to do quite a bit of of editing of data and cleaning it up from the IF format, but it is possible. And we can see here the invoice that we've just been imported. And there it is. So the second way that you can import an IIF file into QuickBooks Online is using a third-party data import utility. Now, the one I'm going to show you here is called Z-Axis. It's a desktop software which allows you to take an IIF file and import that into your QuickBooks Online file. So first off, I'm going to make a new connection and I'm going to connect to my QuickBooks Online company file. Now show my connection status down here. I'm then going to go to the import module and I'm going to browse to the IIF file that I'm going to upload into QuickBooks. So it's the same one that we used when we used the um, Excel import within um, QuickBooks Online. So first step is really to recognize that there are multiple sections to this IIF file and Axis will allow you to select which section you want to import. Now, you could import the account list or the inventory items first if you wanted to, but the section that I'm interested in here is the invoice section, so I select that. Once that has been selected, you'll see a preview of the contents of the lines of that invoice that we're going to upload into QuickBooks Online. So I can come back in here, and now I'm going to select the option to add a new mapping. And what that does is it takes the columns in the IIF file and matches them up against the corresponding columns or fields in QuickBooks Online. So I know the transaction type that I'm importing is an invoice. I'm going to select the corresponding columns in the IIF file now to match those up. So the ones marked in yellow, those are mandatory. So once the maps have been done and saved, then you can reuse them on subsequent imports. So what is also quite useful within this mapping process is we can actually put in constants. So if we wanted to put in a value that would apply to all invoices, then we could do that here. So we can add in extra information. We've also got the ability to um, search and replace. So we can search on various terms and replace with something else. So there's a lot more flexibility with the way that you can map these fields in. So when it comes to some of the other fields, which you might not know what they should be, 
you have the ability to click this link here, it will take you to an article on our website where you can look up the various values. For, for this field that we want to tell that the amounts are inclusive of tax, we can copy this word and we can put that in as a constant into the mapping. Now we also have the ability to search and replace on terms. So if, for example, this field which we know we need to provide a tax code for the line, we're going to map in the option which is taxable here, which is set to bowls. So now when we see this particular line, which is going to tell us the tax code that we should use, we can put in what we call a search and replace. So this is the ability to say, uh, we can say whenever we see the word false, we're going to use, put in the value of no VAT. Give the mapping a name and we can save it. So that can be reused on subsequent imports. You also have the ability to change any data in this grid before we actually process the import. So we can change numbers as we need to. I'm going to change the invoice number here and then we can click on the import. Access will validate the data before it's imported to QuickBooks Online and then we'll begin the process of uploading that directly into your QuickBooks Online company file. So this is one example of an invoice. You could be importing multiple batches of invoices using Z-Axis. So once the import is completed, you'll be able to see the status of that and we can see that that has successfully imported. You click on view and it'll actually take us to that transaction directly in QuickBooks Online so we can make sure that it's imported as we wanted it to. So here's the invoice that I just created, was in the IIF file and I've just imported. You also have the ability before you exit this screen to undo that transaction if you need to. So you can delete it if you decided that you didn't want that um, imported that way. So with Z-Axis you can import multiple IIF transaction formats, whether they're transactions such as invoices, um, sales receipts, checks, timesheets, journals, and so on. And also supports multiple list types as well. So customers, vendors, inventory items, and so on. So you have an extensive list of transaction types that you can upload. And that is without having to do any laborious reformatting of IIFs into the standard Excel format that QuickBooks Online built-in feature requires. So it gives you a lot more flexibility and powerful features when it comes to importing IIFs.